Okay, it's time for final thoughts and breaking news. Trump tweets and the mainstream media falls all over itself. Imagine that. Well, it all started when three UCLA basketball players decided to steal designer sunglasses from a Louis Vuitton store while their team was in China. Now, that's just pathetic on its own, but instead of rotting in a Chinese prison, they're back in cushy California. How? Donald Trump is how. But the basketball equivalent of a Kardashian slash father of the year, LeVar Ball, didn't see it that way. See, LeVar Ball doesn't seem to think Donald Trump was much of a help, and LeVar Ball also doesn't think shoplifting is a big deal. Well, Mr. Ball, maybe not in cushy California, but in China, it is. I guess LeVar Ball is not familiar with the case of Otto Wambier, an American student in North Korea who was tortured and later died after being detained on charges that he tried to steal a poster from his hotel. Mr. Ball, your klepto kid doesn't have to worry about that because Donald Trump personally stepped in and made sure he got home. I know it would absolutely kill you to give the president some credit, but he saved your son's butt, so just a little bit of gratitude would be awesome. But I guess that's too much to ask, though, right? This is just another instance in a series of BS where Donald Trump is damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. Can you imagine what they would have said if Trump hadn't stepped in? Oh, the race car would have been slapped down so hard our ears would still be ringing. But he did, and y'all are still not happy, and you're still slapping down the race card. Why? Because Trump sent off another mean tweet. Get over it. It's a freaking tweet. What are you going to do about it? Scream at the sky again? Make a sign and stand outside of Trump Tower during traditional working hours again? Wear a dumb hat and resist again? Go for it. His tweets offend you. We get it. It's not presidential. We get it. Well, here's the cold, hard truth. We had a presidential president for eight years, and it got us nowhere. Look at diplomatic relations under Obama. All of our enemies got stronger, and we kicked all of our allies, especially Israel, square in the face. That was President Obama being presidential. That's what eight years of bowing to the world and apologizing for America looks like. Well, the apology tour is over, and if your biggest issue with Trump is what he tweets, I think your little snowflake heart will be just fine. Trump is Trump, and I've got news for you. He's not changing. He's effective, and quite frankly, he gets a kick out of watching mainstream leftist media hacks lose their minds each time he lays down 280 characters. If the American people wanted a limp noodle in office, we would have voted for low-energy Jeb or full-blown Democrat John Kasich. Yet here we are. If Trump didn't tweet half of you, journalists would have to research real stories. So thank your lucky stars. You just get to sit back and scroll through Twitter and wait to be offended. Those are my final thoughts from L.A. God bless and take care. Political commentators Maria Cardona, also a Democratic strategist, and Paris Denard, who served in the George W. Bush White House first. Let's talk about the president's comments today on Twitter. Back to hitting the NFL. In case you need a refresher, he writes, Can you believe that the disrespect for our country, our flag, our anthem continues without penalty to the players? The commissioner has lost control of the hemorrhaging league. Players are the boss. So Paris, first out of the gate after Thanksgiving, a fight. Why is he doing this? Well, I don't listen. I don't think this is a fight. I think this is the president continue to engage in a dialogue that the country, the country wants to have and needs to have. It's about patriotism. It's about respect for the flag, and it's about what we should do uh, with respect to the NFL's uh, declining uh, ratings and viewership. And look, the NFL commissioner is up for renewal for his contract. And the contract why does he extension. care about the NFL ratings? Well, it's, again, I don't think the president cares about the NFL ratings so much as he cares about what the players are doing. NFL is a national pastime associated with, with baseball for this country. We love football. We love the NFL. We love the Super Bowl. We love to watch it, especially on Sunday nights and Mondays. And when we go and we watch it, we want to see our players be respectful to the national anthem and respectful for the flag. And so, like I was saying, Jerry Jones and others, owners, were talking about the issue of the Goodall's contract extension. And so this is a very present issue. This is a very timely issue. And when you look at families going around the Thanksgiving table and watching football, we want the players to be respectful. And the president is just raising this issue about being respectful to the flag, being respectful to our national anthem, and showing some pride and respect for our country and for those who have served to protect us to have the freedoms that that flag okay. represents. Okay, so I'm still not quite following the, this sense that it's really an important discussion for the president to be having regarding the NFL. It's an important the conversation for the nation. But, but you know what? But have. you know what he's not commenting on is is Roy Moore specifically. There is a new ad 
from that Senate candidate in Alabama today, who, as we know, has been facing a lot of heat um, following allegations of sexual abuse involving minors. Let's let's watch the new ad. Roy Moore is a man of character. He knows what it means to serve. I definitely believe the establishment is trying to stop Roy Moore. Judge Roy Moore will bring a flashlight of accountability to Washington, D.C. Okay, so obviously a, a lot of women who are coming to the table in that ad for Roy Moore. Maria? Sure. I mean, it's a, it's a strategy that he is desperate for because he clearly has seen his numbers t uh, tank. In, uh, in, in this election, and the allegations have been incredibly hurtful to him. He's had Republicans after Republicans uh, turn their back on him. The latest polls show that uh, the Democratic opponent is, is ahead of him. We'll see what happens there. Um, but it, it is a smart thing for him to ha actually have women out there talking on his behalf. I don't know that it'll work. I know that this is an issue that Republicans are desperate to put behind them. The Republican establishment, Republicans understand that for long term the par for the party, if Roy Moore gets elected to the Senate with allegations of pedophilia, it is awful for the Republican Party. It is awful for the for the long term growth of the Republican Party, especially uh, trying to get women and others where they need to grow. And so I think that moving forward, uh, the fact that Roy Moore is still there and he is holding strong, uh, you know, Many Republicans are wishing that something would happen so that he would either get out of the race or the governor would do something to change, uh, call another special election. Clearly, that's not going to happen. So he's either going to get elected and possibly be pushed out of the Senate, which would be historic, or he's going to fail. And I think in either of those cases, it bodes very, very badly for the Republican Party and for Donald Trump. I'll well, give you a chance to respond, Paris. Go ahead. Sure. Two points. Number one. President Trump does not need to engage in this, in, this, in this because this is something that the Alabama voters need to decide. And furthermore, the president was for Luther Strange from the beginning, whom he campaigned for in person, on Twitter, and in public. And so the president made his, his, his intention known from the very beginning that he was supporting Luther Strange. Point two, M Maria knows full well that the Democrats can't sit back and wash their hands of this issue and say this is just a Republican problem. They have their own issues in the, in the Senate. They have with two members. They have their own issues in the House with a member. And so this is not a partisan or Republican issue as relates to what the damage could be from an allegation to a sitting member of Congress in the House or the Senate. The Democrats have their own history and own problems that are present that they need to focus on, not to even go into the fact that when you look at fundraising uh, and, and the momentum and energy is all on the Republican side. So I don't think that we should say that this is just a Republican issue, a Republican problem. I mean, it's that point about the fundraising, Maria, is, it, 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 it is a fact that Republicans are doing better when it comes to fundraising. But that aside, let me ask about Senator Franken, mm -hmm. because he, too, has uh, issued a new statement this mm -hmm. weekend following the allegations he's facing uh, about misconduct. Uh, he's accused the newest is that he's accused of, of apparently grabbing somebody's back end during a photo shoot mm -hmm. uh, when he was in the Senate already. This is in 2010. And here's what he wrote. We'll put it up there, but we had Sunlin read it for you earlier. So our viewers, in case they missed it, can read it. Marie, I know you have seen this. Do you think it was smart for him to issue the new statement? Is it helpful? Well, I do, because I think what, what it demonstrates is that he is taking responsibility for his actions. He is trying to tell his constituents that he is sorry, he is heartfelt about it, he is going to go back and really reflect on his behavior, and all of that is great. And I agree with Paris that this issue of uh, sexual allegations is not a partisan issue. That, that is very true, and, and both, both parties and the whole country is coming to a reckoning with that. But I also have to say that it is very different, the kinds of allegations that are coming out against Al Franken, and he's going to have to face the music for that. There's no question about that, and, and I'm glad he is, he is doing that, and I'm glad that he's taking responsibility for it, versus Roy Moore, who has whim, woman after woman after woman coming out and accusing him of sexually predatory behavior, two of them under age, which is called pedophilia, 
and it is it is a criminal act and these uh, alleged acts are something that he completely continues to ignore and so there are two very different situations one is taking responsibility for his actions he's going to face the music and one is pretending that none of this ever happened and so i think th that's a big difference here and moving forward the republican party really does have another big reckoning coming because even those republicans who are now against roy moore because they don't want a pedophile in the senate are the same republicans who look the other way uh, not even over a year ago when they let a sexual predator into the Oval Office and his name is Donald Trump. You guys, we got to leave it there. Oh, Paris I thought she was going to say Bill Clinton. Cardona. That was a good one. Okay, I was confused. Okay.